everyone. Welcome to Thursday's edition of Take 5, where we've been looking at the words of Jesus in the Sermon on the Mount, and basically just taking five minutes and seeing how they apply to our lives. And we're in a section in the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew chapter 5, where Jesus is basically telling his disciples how to live and giving them the rule of life, the law of life. He starts with the Old Testament, and then he goes a bit deeper to describe um, how the law is based not just on outward behavior, but on something much, much deeper. Yesterday, we looked, the last two days, we looked at anger, and anger and murder and how those things are connected. And we saw how relevant that was to us in this angry day. The words today are just as relevant, if not more, in our sensual, sex-crazed days. What Jesus says uh, is so applicable. Uh, here's what he says. He talks about adultery, um, awful in any setting. I've experienced it firsthand with uh, my parents going through a divorce. I'm sure you have too. Um, um, so he, he validates that command that adultery is wrong. But then he goes deeper and he talks about how lust and the looks of our eyes are where adultery comes from. Well, here's what he says. Verse 27 in Matthew chapter 5, he says, You've heard it said that, it, that you should not commit adultery. Absolutely not. But I say to you that everyone who looks at a woman with lustful intent has already committed adultery with her in his heart. I'll stop there. No adultery. Indeed, Anyone who looks at a woman, but let's let's make it general because in these days of, in a sense of sexual equality, it goes both ways. Anyone looking at someone else with lustful intent, it's all about the intent. Anyone looking at someone else with a lustful intent, and whether it's the person across the hall in the office, whether it's somebody on your computer screen, um, what, wherever your eyes are going to look lustfully, um, that's the problem. And that's the beginning of the issue of, of sin and of adultery. And that's the nature and the culture in which we live in. In many ways, what Jesus is, is really going toward, at times we read the scriptures and we think that Jesus and his father are very um, anti-sex, let's say. I'll say it right there. They're not. In many ways, the, the sex is a wonderful, beautiful gift that God has given the human race. And he doesn't want us to suppress our sexuality, but he wants us to understand it and express it in the beautiful context of which it should be expressed and ultimately fulfilled, ultimately fulfilled in the covenant of marriage. Outside of those boundaries is when we get into trouble. In our society, so often sexuality and sex is, has become a recreational sport. It's become an idol. And so wherever we can fill our cup, wherever we can bow to the idol, wherever we can enjoy the sport, it's good. And Jesus is saying, no, sex is a means toward intimacy. It's a means toward fulfilling your ultimate covenant love with somebody else. Anything outside of that becomes a real problem. And so it, more than just the action of lust, I think the scriptures teach us about the very purpose of sex and that it's meant to be a beautiful gift to express love and co covenant and commitment as well as produce children if God is willing. So the, the issue is adultery. The intent of lust is part of the problem of adultery, just like anger was with murder. Here's and he goes on, and I'll just read this because on Sunday I did a message just three days ago, four days ago, um, uh, on this very passage. So we're going to put a link. If you want to listen to the message, you'll get this a lot more in detail. But Jesus is going to speak in exaggerated hyperbole to say, don't go there and do everything you can not to stumble in your lusting. Here's what he says. If your right eye causes you to sin... Gouge it out and throw it away. Wow. Again, exaggeration. He's not telling you go out, but he is saying do what you can to avoid lust. It is better for you to lose one of your members than your whole body be thrown into hell. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off 
and throw it away, for it is better that you lose one of your members than your whole body go into hell. Jesus speaks exaggeratedly to his disciples to say, um, the gift of sex is meant to be sacred and enjoyed in the context of the right relationships. Outside of that, you have the blight of adultery. And in many ways, the basis of adultery is oftentimes the, the selfish, lustful looks that our society is so big on. And Jesus says, go out of your way to avoid those. If you want to listen to this more in detail, we're going to put a link to the message. Otherwise, I'll see you tomorrow as we continue Jesus' sermon. So long.